Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video we are going to see about how we can use Azure Data Factory to create a pipeline from scratch to perform a copy data activity. So in the last video we have seen how we can use a copy data tool to copy a file from source to destination. So whereas we used a scenario to copy a CSV file from a data lake and put the CSV file into another data lake. So we are going to use the same use case to perform this operation, but the only change would be creating a data factory pipeline from scratch. So let's see how we can do that. So as you can see here, I'm in the Azure portal. So I have a source uh, data lake. So if I go to the source data lake and inside the source container, so inside the source container, as you can see here, I have a CSV file called a sample CSV file. So this is the file where we are going to copy from this source container and put the file into this destination uh, data lake. So I have another data lake, which is this data lake, Mr. K, whereas I have a disk container. So inside this container, as you can see here, there is no files here. So we are going to copy this file and put the file into this uh, location. So let's see how we can do that using the Azure Data Factory. So let me open Azure Data Factory here. So as you can see here, uh, under the author tab, we already have a pipeline. So this pipeline has been generated automatically from the copy data tool uh, that has been created in the last video. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video, so please uh, watch that so that you can get more information for you to understand in this video. Cool. So this pipeline has been generated automatically and also we have two data sets that has been created automatically. And if I go to the manage tab and go to the link service connection, as you can see here, these two link service connection also created uh, as part of the data uh, copy data tool. So now let's see how we can create all of this step by step. So in one of my previous video, I mentioned about what are the three different things that is required uh, for any activities, integration runtime, link service connection and the data sets. So we are going to follow the same procedures to actually create this pipeline from scratch. So the first thing is the integration runtime. So if I go to the integration runtime, as you can see here, there is a default Azure integration runtime. Uh, so I'm going to use this integration runtime to create uh, the link service connection because since Azure Data Lake is a cloud-based solution, we need to use the uh, Azure integration runtime for integrating with that. I'm going to use this option. And the next step would be creating a link service connection. So to create a link service connection, I'm going to link service connections from the manage tab. And I'm going to click on this new button over here. And I'm going to type for data lake. So we are going to create a link service connection for data lake. So I'm going to choose this and click on continue. And here I'm going to give a name. So just to give a difference between the names which is available over here, I'm going to start the name with LS, which stands for link service. And I'm just going for source. Uh, data lake. So now we have given the name for the link service connection. So the next step would be choosing the right integration runtime. So as discussed before, we are going to go with this auto resolve integration runtime since the data lake is a cloud based solution. And we are going with the uh, Kunki as the authentication type. And now we are going to choose the Azure subscription. So I have only one subscription, which is Azure subscription one. So under the subscription, uh, we are going to choose what is the storage account name. So I'm going to choose the source data like Mr. K. So that is the storage account where this file file is located. As you can see here, source data like Mr. K. So now we have chosen the storage account name. Now let's test the connection. So if I click on this connection over here, so it will just give us an information about whether the connection is successful or not. As you can see here, the connection is successful, which means that we are good to create this. So I'm going to click on this create button over here to create it. Cool, as you can see here, now we can see the link service connection that we have created. So I'm going to create a new link service connection for the destination data lake as well. So for that, I'm going to go with the same step again, uh, search for data lake, choose this, give the name for the destination data lake. So in this case, ls dest underscore lake. Uh, data lake. Cool. So now we have given the name. We are going with the same integration runtime and the authentication type is count key. And I'm going to select the Azure subscription, where uh, in this case, which is Azure subscription one. And now the storage account name is uh, disk data lake mistake gate. So this is the storage account where we are going to copy the CSV file. So after giving all this information, let's test this connection. The connection is successful, and now we can. Uh, go ahead and click create. 
code. So now we have created two link service connection, one for the source data lake and the other one for the destination data lake. We have chosen the right integration runtime, which is Azure integration runtime. And the next step is creating the link service connection. And the third final step is to create the data sets. So to create the data sets, we need to go to the author tab. And as you can see here, uh, we have the data sets option over here. So to create a new data sets, there is an option to click plus icon over here and click on data set. So we need to create two data sets as well, one for source and the other one for the destination. So for that, we need to first specify what is the data source. So in this case, the data source is Azure Data Lake. So I'm going to search for Azure Data Lake as well and click on continue. So now we need to choose what is the format of this data sets. So as seen before, the source data set is in the CSV format. So I'm going to go for this delimited text, which is the CSV format. So I'm going to click on the CSV and going to click on continue. And now it is asking for the uh, data sets name. So I'm going to give source underscore CSV. And now we need to specify what is the link service connection where we are going to create this uh, source data set. So for that, I'm going to select the source uh, link service connection that we have created recently. So I'm going to choose this ls underscore source data like. So now we need to browse to that particular CSV file to select. Uh, so I'm going to click on this browse icon, go for the source container, and finally click this CSV file and click on OK. Cool, so now I'm going to hit OK. So now the source data sets has been created. And one interesting thing about this is like you have a lot of uh, information about the connection details and stuff. So there is an option to actually preview the data. So as you can see here, if you click on this preview data option, you can see how the data looks like in the source. So similar to that, now we have created the source data sets. We have to create the destination data sets as well. So to create a new data sets, we are going to do the same operation. So click on this plus icon, click on data set. And I'm going to choose data lake. Same CSV file. I wanted the file to be in the CSV format in the destination as well. So I'm going to go for delimited text and click on continue. I'm going to give the name dest underscore CSV. And for the link service connection, choosing the link service connection, which we have created for destination. So ls dest data lake. So now we need to specify in which location we need to copy the data in. So for that, I'm going to click on this browse icon again and click on this dest container. So this is the place where I'm going to copy this file. As you can see here, uh, this is the destination data lake. I inside this dest container, I need to copy this CSV file. So that is what we are going to select over here. And once you are happy about that, you can click OK and also click OK over here. Cool, so now we have created uh, two data sets. So don't worry about all this column delimiter and all the other stuffs for now, because as part of this demo, we are just going to create a simple copy data pipeline. So in the future videos, we can explore like how we can use these options and when to use these options and stuff. So right now we have created these two data sets. And as you can see here, there is an option called Publish All. So this is something like to save all your changes and stuff. So for example, if you didn't use this Publish All and close this tab, you lose all your changes. So to publish all the changes, you have to click this. So I'm going to click this and it will show us like what are the changes that has been done. And as you can see here, we have created two data sets and I'm going to click on this Publish icon over here. I mean, the Publish button over here. So now it is actually uh, saving all our changes. Cool. Now we have everything uh, to create a pipeline. So we have the link service connection, we have uh, data sets and everything uh, that is required to create a pipeline. Now the next step would be creating a pipeline. So to create a pipeline, you have to come to the author tab and uh, click on this plus icon, pipeline and pipelines. Cool. So as you can see here, a new pipeline has been created with a kind of a workspace that you can use to create a pipeline. So the first step would be actually changing the name of the pipeline. As you can see here, currently the name is pipeline one. So to change the name, you can use this option over here. So I'm going to give a name, uh, copy from scratch. Cool. So now we have given the name for the pipeline. So as you can see here, there are a lot of different activities in here on the left side. You have a move on transform activity, synapse activity, and different activities which uh, that can be used to create a pipeline. 
So for now, we are going to use this copy date activity uh, for copying the CSV files. So to use this copy date activity, you need to click on this and drag and put that into this window over here. So as you can see here, a new uh, activity has been created, which is the copy date activity. And the first step would be, as you can see here, we have we are in the general tab where you can change the name of this copy date activity. So I'm going to just use copy CSV. Just a meaningful name should be fine. Leave all these settings for now. And the most important thing is the source and the sync. So this is like source. So what is the source it needs to uh, copy the data from? And the sync is just the destination location where it needs to copy the data to. So I'm going to click on the source. And as you can see here, it is asking for the source data sets. We have already created the source data set. So I'm just going to use this option to select it. So our data sets that we have created recently is source underscore CSV. So I'm going to just click on this and you don't have to worry about all these settings and we can go to the sync uh, tab where you can specify the sync data set now. So I'm going to use this option to choose a sync data set which is dist underscore CSV. So now we have uh, used this copy data activity and uh, uh, configured all the source and sync and everything and you don't have to worry about this mapping or settings or user properties for now. So this is just a simple copy data activity or copy data pipeline. Cool. So once we have uh, chosen the source and the sync, which is the required thing uh, for running this pipeline, you can just publish the changes. So I'm going to click on this publish all. And now it is just uh, publishing the pipelines itself. So I'm going to click on this publish. Cool. So as you can see here, the publishing is completed, which means that all our changes has been saved. Now, the last step is to run this pipeline. So you can run this pipeline in two ways. One is the debug mode and the other one is the trigger mode. So I'm going to use uh, this debug mode to actually run this pipeline in this demo. Uh, so one of the main uh, usage of this debug mode is like uh, just to uh, test your functionality of the pipelines that you're creating, you can use this debug mode. So let's run this pipeline and I'm going to click on this debug. So now it will start to run this pipeline as you can see here. We are in the output tab. So if I hit refresh over here, and as you can see here, the copy CSV activity is currently running. And right now the status is queued. So let's wait for some time until this copy pipeline has been run. Cool. As you can see here, the pipeline has been successful. Uh, so which means that it has copied the data from the source and put that into the destination. So let's see if it has done uh, copy data correctly. So for that, I'll go to this destination storage account. And right now we don't see any uh, files over here. So there is an option called refresh. So if I click on this, as you can see here, so this, this is a file that has been copied recently. So if I just go to the source, so the same sample CSV file has been copied to this destination location as well. Cool, so now you have an idea about like how to create a pipeline from scratch uh, to a simple copy pipeline uh, to copy the CSV file from a data lake to another data lake. In the next video, let's see how we can trigger this pipeline in different modes. As said before, we ran this pipeline using this debug mode. So there are different triggering options that is available inside the Azure Data Factory. Uh, you can configure a schedule trigger or tumbling trigger or the block trigger and different custom trigger triggers as well. So let's explore all these one by one in the next video. So that's it for today. So if you really like the video, please like, share and subscribe and see you in another video. Until then, cheers. Bye.